So hello everybody, and yes, unfortunately, those are pictures of me, and yes, I'm aware that the chin hair and the earrings made me look like a dickhead, all right? <laughs> those are pictures of me when I was back in uni, and like every good American fraternity boy back then, I was in love with three things, booze, women, and partying. But I fell in love with the fourth while I was at uni, and funny enough, it was astronomy. And so I want to tell you tonight why. And so I actually took a class, and on that first day of the class, the professor was explaining to us how we measure distances in space. And he explained that because the universe is so vast, we measure distances in a term we call light years. And that's because speed of light is the fastest known speed that we're aware of at this moment. So for some context, light travels in a vacuum at 300,000 kilometers per second. So if I could travel at that speed, I would go around the Earth almost eight times in one second. All right? Pretty crazy. But he said, let's give you guys some context and let's take a journey through the cosmos. So he explained that if we traveled at the speed of light to reach the moon, it would take us 1.2 seconds. Just so you guys are aware, the Apollo 11 missions took three days to get there, okay? And he said, so if we left Earth and we wanted to travel towards the sun, which is 150 million kilometers away, it would take us 8.3 minutes to get there at the speed of light. Now the cool and interesting thing about this is the sunlight that hits your skin and burns it here on Earth every day wait for it, <laughs> is 8.3 minutes old by the time that it reaches you. So here's where he absolutely blew my mind with the facts that he dropped that single-handedly created my love for astronomy. And so we continued our journey through the solar system at the speed of light. And seven hours later, we passed by Pluto and we left into what is known as outer space. And so we explained that once we got there, the closest major celestial object that we would hit once we got into outer space was also the closest star to us other than our own sun and it's called Proxima Centauri. And Proxima Centauri is 4.2 light years away from us. Pluto was seven hours. So that is a lot of free space in between. More importantly, Proxima Centauri is the first star out of billions that reside in the galaxy of the Milky Way where we are. It's crazy facts. But let's flip this back on us for a second. Because what does this mean to us, right? Because the challenge is we cannot travel at the speed of light. No animate object can travel at the speed of light. But naturally, I wanted some context for myself. So I wanted to figure out how fast have we traveled? How fast could we potentially travel? And so I did some research and I found out some really interesting facts. And the first of which is that the fastest a human being, even to today, fastest human being has traveled is 40,000 kilometers per hour on the Apollo 10 space missions. And I thought, all right, if I had access to an Apollo 10 type spacecraft, hypothetically, and if I had the resources and the technology where I could travel for as long as I wanted at 40,000 kilometers an hour, how long would it take me to get to Proxima Centauri, 4.2 light years away? The answer is mind-blowingly 113,000 years. <laughs> that is the closest star to us, all right? Now, I'm not done. You guys are probably wondering why the hell a dinosaur keeps bouncing around on my slides. <laughs> the reason is dinosaurs roamed the Earth roughly 200 million years ago. So let's say hypothetically my dinosaur also had access to an Apollo 10 type <laughs> spacecraft. <laughs> And 200 million years ago, he left Earth on that Apollo 10 spacecraft and has ever since then been traveling at 40,000 kilometers an hour through our galaxy. My dinosaur would have only traveled 8% of the distance across our entire galaxy in 200 million years, okay? So again, I, I was doing some research and I found a couple other facts. The second interesting one I found is that technically humans, we can travel at about half the speed of light. Now we don't have the technology, but we could get there. What our bodies cannot handle is the acceleration. So it would literally take us years to get to that speed, if you can believe that. I also found out that NASA right now has just started at the very ground level trying to introduce this certain type of warp speed, if you will, where they're bending space and time to travel further faster. And the reason they're doing that is because once you guys listen to me here, even if we could travel at the speed of light, it's kind of meaningless. Our galaxy, Milky Way you're gonna see here in a second, is 100,000 light years across. We are one of billions of galaxies in the universe and the closest one to us is 2.5 million light years away. So we need another way to travel if we're actually going to explore the universe. But out of all these facts I've shared with you guys tonight, I wanna to leave you with the one that I think is the coolest. And so I know from time to time, I'm sure we've all stood and looked at the night sky. 
The cool thing about it is no matter how many times you've done that in the past, no matter how many times you do it in the future, every single night you're actually seeing a slightly different view because light from further and further away is reaching us, which is absolutely nuts, right? But more importantly, you are never looking at a real image when you look up, a real time image. You are actually looking at a portrait of the past because as I explained earlier, the closest star to us and the light from it took 4.2 years to reach our eyes here on Earth. Thank you very much.